Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed those s'mores bars. They were delicious and r like ridiculous looking. <laughs> like it was, I don't know, it's like what I would imagine when I was like 10 years old that I would have dreamed up for my parents to make for dinner one night. So, um, yeah, that was good. <laughs> so tonight we're gonna do another sweet dish. We're gonna do um, cream puffs, and we're gonna do that, you know the strawberry whipped cream that we did um, for the strawberry whipped milk? That's actually gonna be the filling for them. So basically what we're gonna do is make a pat -a choux which is the dough um, that it makes the cream puffs. So it's actually kind of an interesting process. You go ahead and you cook um, the entire mix ahead of time, um, and then you like cut in the eggs after and slowly add them to the dough. Um, it's just really a diff like a different technique than you've probably seen. Um, and this dough can be utilized for a sweet or a savory dish. And this is the dough that is used for eclairs as well as cream puffs. Um, so it's a good one for you guys to know if you don't want to make the cream puff shape, you could always do eclairs, or if you wanted to fill it with like maybe you want to do like a like a whipped herb cheese or something, or like some caramelized onions or something like that, you have that option. Um, so yeah, so let's go, uh, go ahead and I'll show you guys the ingredients. Alright, so the main components of this dish are going to be flour, eggs, milk, sugar, salt, um, and butter. So we have those ingredients. And then to make the, um, the like the actual filling, it's going to be the Nesquik and the heavy cream again like we did before. So what we're going to do is we're first going to set the oven to 425 degrees, which I've already done. And then we're going to start measuring out our ingredients for the dough. Alright, so I have all of our containers set up. We're going to go ahead and measure everything before we even start to make the dough. So first thing we're going to do is a half a cup of whole milk. Right, so we have our milk. Next, we're going to cut um, six tablespoons of butter into six tablespoons of butter into small um, pieces. All right, so we have our six tablespoons of butter. Now we're going to go and measure one tablespoon of sugar. All right, we have our one tablespoon of sugar. Now we're going to go ahead and put a half a teaspoon of salt in here. All right, we have our salt. Now it's time for one cup of flour. All right, we have one cup of flour. Now time to crack five eggs into this bowl. All right, so we have our five eggs. All right, guys, so we have all of our ingredients measured out. So the first thing we're going to do is combine the sugar, the salt half a cup of milk and the six tablespoons of butter as well as a half a cup of water into our saucepan. Alright, so we have our milk, our butter, our sugar, and our salt. Now I'm just adding a half a cup of water. And we're going to let this all melt, uh, or the butter melt. And then we're going to go to our next step, which is adding this flour. And in order to do that, you're going to need a wooden spoon. Alright, while well, we're waiting for our butter to melt with everything, um, I set aside two sheet trays already lined. Also, um, correct one egg and mixed it with some water for some egg wash. I also prepared two pastry bags in our cups like we've done before, um, so we can spoon the mixture in here. Alright, so our butter is nice and melted, so what we're going to do is we're going to add our one cup of flour into the mixture. I'm going to take it off the heat just while we initially mix it. So you're going to have to mix pretty aggressively initially to incorporate that flour. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we have our flour mixed in, I'm putting it back on the heat, and I'm going to cook it for three minutes. Alright, so I've taken this off the heat, it's been about three minutes. Ooh, geez. So our dough comes together very nicely, and then I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a film at the bottom of this. That's what we're looking for. Alright, so what we're going to do is I took our pot off the heat, and we're going to let our mixture cool for about three to four minutes. Um, and then I have our five eggs set aside. So what we're going to do next, once this cools, once this mixture cools, we're going to add the eggs in one at a time. All right, it's been about three minutes, so I'm going to start adding in our eggs one at a time. Make sure that you completely incorporate the egg before you add the next one. And I will warn you guys, it's going to look like a complete like scrambled egg mess. <laughs> Not scrambled egg, but it's going to have this really weird gloopy texture at first. Don't be scared. That's just how it is when you first start adding the eggs. This is completely normal, so don't worry. All right, so we've incorporated all of our eggs. We have this very smooth and stretchy kind of dough. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this into our pastry bags. All right, so we have our pastry bags full. So we're going to take these out and ooh, and we're going to cut a little hole in them. And then we're going to pipe them out onto our sheet trays. All right, so we have all these piped out. And when we add the egg wash, we can kind of push down these little curly parts. All right, so these are all brushed with the egg wash. So we're going to put these in that 425 degree oven for 15 minutes. And then what we're going to do is decrease the temperature to 350 degrees. And we're going to cook them for another 15 to 20. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see. Sorry, my oven door needs some cleaning. Uh, but these have been in for 15 minutes at 425 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the temperature down to 350 and cook them for another 15 to 20 until they're golden brown. All right, guys, so the ones that were on the bottom rack, I'm just letting cook for another few minutes. But what we're going to do is we're going to poke holes in the bottom of these so they, all the steam can come out. So we're going to just use a paring knife. 
All right, so I've poked holes in the bottom of these, so we're actually gonna let them um, kind of like rest on their side like that. I've turned the oven off, but we're gonna um, put these back in the oven and prop the door open, and we're gonna let them cool in there for 30 minutes, and it's gonna help dry them out. All right, so while we're waiting for those to cool, we're gonna go ahead and attach our whisk, hold on, our whisk attachment to our KitchenAid, and we're gonna go ahead and make our uh, strawberry uh, cream for the inside. So we're gonna start out with this heavy cream. We're gonna add about half this container, which is about a cup. All right, so we have our cream. Now we're gonna add a few spoonfuls of the strawberry Nesquik. I added two to start, but we can always add more. So we're gonna go ahead and lock our uh, mixer into place and turn this on the high speed. Um, we'll add, if we need to add more of the powder, we absolutely can, but we're gonna want this to have um, some nice peaks. All right, this isn't quite mixed yet, but I'm gonna add another uh, full spoonful of the Nesquik. All right, so, that, so there we have our strawberry cream. We're gonna, um, I set up a pastry bag and this actually has the star tip in it. So we're gonna go ahead and add our whipped cream to this. All right, so we have our uh, whipped cream mixture. So I'm just gonna refrigerate this until the cream puffs cool. All right, so our cream puffs are nice and cooled. Um, so the next few steps, we're gonna go ahead and cut these in half. All right, so we have our cream piped into these and I have the tops right next to them. All right, so I piped in, I decided we're not gonna do the white chocolate on top. I think it's gonna be too sweet. So instead I'm gonna add some of the sprinkles right in here. All right, so I put the tops on. Now we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar on top. All right, those are all ready. Now we're gonna go ahead and plate these up. So tasty, what do you guys think? They look great. All right guys, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed that. I think they look beautiful. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty fun recipe to do. Um, yeah, I'm pretty tired. That one took a long time. So this is one, this is a weekend project if you have the day off. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. So I want to start up that um, like the Epcot World Showcase series pretty soon and some more Disney Eats. So and I did a poll on um, Instagram asking like what Disney snack or like universal snack you wanted to see next. And it was a tie between butterbeer and soft pretzels. And I've already done soft pretzels um, in the uh, Canada episode. So not to say that we can't do those again and do them in a more traditional pretzel shape. Um, but I think I'm gonna try the butterbeer. Not Disney, but it's universal. Um, so that'll be good, like for Harry Potter, that'll be fun. So we'll definitely do that in the next week or so. Um, and then I definitely wanna pick one of the World Showcase dishes. So I'm thinking about making um, pot stickers um, for the China Pavilion. And if you guys know of anywhere I can get um, bubbles for bubble tea, like the boba balls, let me know. I was gonna try to order them from Amazon, but they don't sell them at my grocery store. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a good night and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.